Uh, good afternoon. I am Kenny Kahn. I am principal here at Redwood High School, also the principal of our uh, secondary alternative ed programming in Castro Valley Unified School District. Uh, I'm joined today uh, by Ms. Kelly Abbott. She's our CVVA teacher on special assignment. I'm also here with our counselors, uh, Ms. Nina Ascension, who works with our full-time six through 12 CVVA students, and Mr. Raul Rodriguez, who's our um, CVVA hybrid counselor uh, for our students who partner with our Castro Valley High School uh, in a two to four or four to two combination. And we'll talk about that here in a little bit. Um, obviously, we're very happy uh, that you've come to join us today, and we wanted to do a brief presentation uh, for families uh, interested in joining, coming to, or have already been perhaps in the middle school program and will be joining for CUVA uh, coming this fall of 2022. Next slide, please. So our, our virtual academy, <laughs> uh, this is the actual classroom, room 15 here on the Redwood campus. Um, it is uh, designed obviously to help for supporting our uh, CVVA students if and when they come to the classroom for the uh, workshop tutorial support. Um, and this was uh, historically what uh, was CVVA when it was a much smaller program uh, that housed about 20 students in total um, as they would work both with the online programming and also with some one-on-one -on -one coaching uh, by teachers along with the partnership with our counselors. Next slide, please. Uh, so Castro Valley Virtual Academy is a newer high school option for CVUSD high school students. Um, it's fully WASC accredited, uh, offers A through G courses in terms of college prep. Uh, it provides blended learning for both online and, and virtual along with in-person teacher support, uh, support students and families with regular progress updates and communication and offers flexible and individualized scheduling options. Our vision uh, at Castro Valley Virtual Academy provides students with alternative and flexible learning to prepare for college and career while engaging in opportunities outside of the typical school schedule, to work through challenges, explore accelerated or non-traditional learning, and develop independence as a learner or young adult. Uh, we have you know, our school-wide learning outcomes. At CVVA, we want our students to be able to demonstrate college and career readiness right, attaining rigorous um, applicable post-secondary preparation, develop a high level of proficiency in technology, become adaptable, flexible learners, develop an understanding of, of, uh, of, of self as a learner, create and lead an individualized education pathway. Um, we want students to be able to develop into well-rounded individuals, expanding social experiences, developing independence and self-sufficiency, and create and experience alternative learning priorities. Um, as previously shared, um, you know, in response to the global pandemic, while um, CVVA has become the online or independent study learning option, CVVA actually has been in existence for over six years uh, under the distance learning requirements AB 98 in California. Um, there were new systems that were put in place in 2021 uh, school year to uh, meet the distance learning needs uh, for our students. So. Um, the typical structure of CVVA is the blended learning, right? Online and in-person support for teachers, ability to organize classes in a variety of ways because of flexible scheduling and attendance. Something that we're aware of is obviously given our new attendance requirements, um, really operating through a typical school day um, of the 8 a.m. to, to 4 p.m. window. Um, while attendance is being taken there, you know, teachers are working around the clock to help support in terms of data input upon re review of uh, students' progress shown in Edgenuity as well. Um, as we shared, CVVA uses a blended learning model uh, where students are logging in to the Edgenuity Online Independent Study Program um, that is primarily asynchronous. Um, our middle school SEL program right now is taught by uh, Mr. Vallejo and Ms. Andres, um, and it's a far more hands-on more synchronous model as we're you know diving into some tough um, tough discussions uh, but is also helping to build uh, some social development among our, our middle school students at a point in time uh, where being remote still lends its opportunity to build community 
and, and to have some of those uh, courageous conversations and tough talks. Um, with our blended learning model for high school, we want to help support highly qualified. Uh, we support with highly qualified teachers um, and content specialists, grades six through twelve, um, who will come in to help support in virtual sessions. Um, we, you know, for our grades six through twelve, we do have uh, live sessions throughout the day. But obviously, in speaking about high school, you know, our high school CVVA teachers are available for workshop sessions um, in person or virtually. Um, and obviously, want to make sure that students not only showing progress in the program, but feel like they also have a teacher of record that they can work with throughout the school week and throughout the full semester. Um, I will humbly share that um, Miss Kelly Abbott is 100% our uh, ingenuity guru here at CBBA. Um, and she, I would like for her to share a little bit about what the ingenuity platform looks like. And you know, I'll, I'll let her take it from there. Um, so the images here are really helpful. Um, one of the things that Edgenuity uh, added about two years ago was a pacing guide with a calendar. So I always encourage my own students to follow the calendar on the left so that when they go into each of their classes, and you can see those classes on the right side there, um, the program is really designed to let them know what tasks they should have done each day to be able to stay on target. Um, so those are kind of some of the strategies that Edgenuity has developed over the last couple of years, just especially during the pandemic with students kind of needing some support when it comes to structure and knowing how to make sure that they get those classes done within that semester timeframe. So those have been definitely some helpful tools that they've added over the last couple of years. Do you want me to talk again? I'm happy to. <laughs> Certainly. Our, um, I've been with CVVA for six years um, and it's definitely changed a bit um, in the last two years because of the pandemic. Prior to um, spring of 2020, we had in-person support. Uh, we typically had it on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday afternoons for any of the students who were taking courses at CVHS in the morning. That way they were able to come on campus in the afternoon for uh, support and for help. That turned into a virtual support last year. So all of our content teachers um, set up Google Meets or set up Zoom Meets in the afternoons to help students virtually. And we're still doing that. Um, and we'll, you know, we'll look at as we kind of are coming out of this <laughs> two year long process, looking at ways that we can start supporting students in person again, because not every student um, you know, is successful with that virtual support. So we'll definitely look at, as we go into the next school year, um, ways that teachers can provide both of those supports to students. Maybe uh, one of the counselors? I was going to say, for the enrollment <laughs> options for students, I'll let uh, Ms. Sunshine and Ms. Rodriguez share. Yeah, so there are currently three different enrollment options with CVVA, um, the first of which is full-time Castro Valley Virtual Academy. Um, taking all of your classes through the Edgenuity uh, platform. Um, the other two options are hybrid options. Um, the first one is a 4-2 split, and it's 4-2 in, in uh, four classes of CVVA, two in person at the high school. Um, and then the vice versa, there's um, the, the other way around, right? Um, so it, it's a 4-2 split in either direction the majority at the high school or the majority online. Um, so that, those are the three different options um, in terms of CBBA enrollment. Um, and then there's also a concurrent enrollment. Um, if you're interested in taking classes while you're you know, in, enrolled as a full-time high school student, you are able to do the concurrent enrollment at the community college. Um, that's always an option. I recommend typically that you do that over the summer. Um, the, during the school year, I do recommend students prioritize their high school coursework um, and then as their schedules and um, availability over the summer um, becomes a little bit more free, they, they are able to take concurrent enrollment classes at the community college. So students use flexible scheduling options to create a schedule that reflects um, a time that's gonna work best for them. We understand that you know every student is different and along that there may be mental health needs or medical needs and then to better support our students with those needs. Um, sometimes for students, it may be helpful 
to, to be, you know, four classes in person and two online with the afternoon classes um, online so that it, it, it kind of works with their schedule a little bit better. Other students, they're, they're the first two classes and then the four online. So depending on what your students' needs are, um, it provides that flexibility. Um, like I said, you, you know, you can enroll in the community college um, cur currently. Again, I, I typically recommend that happen um, over the summer, but it is also a possibility um, through dual enrollment. Um, if your student has a job, or you know, that's also something you may want to consider um, with the CBVA classes. You're, you're as long as you're making that necessary progress each day and and staying on track, which is really what we're looking for. Um, it would create some flexibility um, if you do have a job. You're able to accelerate through your classes a little bit faster. Um, and so that's one of the, the benefits and one of the perks of being in the Edgenuity CBBA program. Um, and again, um, you know, mental health uh, and medical needs. Um, if your student has a 504 plan, for example, or is struggling with anxiety or depression or stress, um, this flexibility and schedule does allow and does support students with those mental and medical needs. Um, it, it allows students to develop independence and take charge of their own learning. Um, in college, you know, a lot of that learning um, happens in lectures, but also independently. Um, so this is a step towards that and uh, allowing students um, to take ownership and leadership within their own education. So a sample, of, you know, schedule for a full-time student, um, if, they're, if they're doing all their classes online, would be, you know, we would recommend that they usually get these done in the morning. Um, our attendance window closes at four um, every day. And so that's something that you're, you should be mindful of. Um, so we do recommend where possible that your student log in in the morning and get their, their work done in the morning. But again, there is flexibility with the schedule. Um, and so this is just a sample schedule that we, we kind of mocked up. Um, so let's say your student is working in the morning um, and from nine to two dedicates these hours for their high school classes would then have um, some flexibility in the evening um, for let's say a community college class or if they have work in the afternoon. Um, same thing on Tuesday, right? Where they're tackling their, their classes in the morning. And then um, in previous years, we've had in-person support on Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday, like Ms. Abbott said. Um, so that would be a time for your student to receive in-person support um, on the, our Redwood campus. Um, and then again, same thing on Wednesday, your student logging in from nine to 12 um, for those CVBA classes and then checking into the in-person support from 1.30 to 3.30 and then having to tackle the, the community college class in the afternoon. Um, again, on Thursday, um, nine to 12 with the CVBA classes in the morning, in-person support in, in the afternoon. And then finally on Friday from nine to two. So this is just a sample schedule of what a, a student schedule may look like if they're doing full-time CVBA um, and assuming that we have the in-person support um, workshops uh, uh, re-offered in, in the future. Um, so this is just something to be mindful of and, and it's a sample schedule. Again, if your, your student's doing a hybrid schedule, they'd probably be in, in the early mornings at, in person at the high school um, with the afternoon sections. In the past, how they ran is um, students would be in person periods one through four at the high school. Um, so that would free up their periods five and six for their workshops at Redwood. Um, so that, that's kind of how, how it would work in, in terms of um, those, those afternoon workshops. So yeah, um, next slide. So that's kind of what I was talking about here uh, is your, if your student's doing a hybrid enrollment, right? You're, you're, pr you're probably either gonna be doing periods one and two or periods one, two, three, and four, depending on what your hybrid enrollment is. So if, if for example, your, your student is doing periods one through four, um, they'd be in person um, on Monday, Thursday, and Friday. Um, and then also on, because of the block schedule, um, it's one, three, five on Tuesday, and two, four, six on Wednesday. So it depends on what your student schedule is. Um, but like I said, the, the uh, in-person classes at CVHS would be in the morning with the workshops in the afternoon. And so again, this is just another iteration of that hybrid model. So this is a, a sample schedule of what you should be taking um, in CBVA. And, and so 
some of these classes, if, depending on if your student is doing a full-time CVBA enrollment or a hybrid enrollment, may be taken at either CVBA or at CVHS. So it does just depend on what your student's enrollment is. For ninth grade, um, again, this is tackling the graduation requirement. So some of these elective blocks here at the bottom may be um, used to you know, complete the A through G for four-year schools. Um, for example, the, the, um, another year of math. So the, the third year after you do the first two years of math, um, you, you will have met your graduation requirement. For A through G, you do need three years. So that's technically another elective spot that you have. Um, so if for graduation, you are earning elective credit um, for A3G, um, it's, it's required three years. Um, so, and generally um, your, your schedule will free up a little bit more for 11th and 12th grade um, as the first two years, you're doing a lot of the requirements what you need for graduation. Um, as an example, your, your freshman year, you're taking CCG and health as well as PE. Um, so your junior, senior year, that, that schedule is gonna free up a little bit. Um, so just be mindful of that. Um, CVHS does have a lot more AP and honors classes. So I know that's a, a, you know, a, a, an area um, that students are really interested in. So if you are interested in the AP honors courses, um, there will be probably a little bit more availability through Castro Valley High School compared to CVBA. Um, so this is kind of a, a guideline of what your student should be taking year by year. So English, you do need your four years to graduate. Um, your math, you need two years for graduation, three years recommended for A through G. For your science, you need your um, a year of life science, a year of biological science. So um, for science, for graduation, you need two years. For A through G, it's um, two years with three recommended. And then you do have to have either two of the following three, biology, chemistry, or physics. Um, for graduation, you need your CCG and health. That is not a requirement for A through G, but it is for graduation. Um, same thing with PE, you need your uh, PE your first two years. Um, so you need that for graduation, but it's not a requirement for A through G. And then you would have your elective. So for example, one of the electives um, that you may want to consider enrolling in is the language, um, where you do need that for A through G, whereas you don't need a language to graduate from high school. Um, and then the big difference too is, is the um, C requirement. So you need, need, do need a C minus or higher for A through Gs um, and, and the four-year schools, whereas for graduation, you do earn um, credit with a D. So, you know, with the CVBA um, program, you do receive counselor support. Um, we do so, uh, help you with, you know, your course selection and A through G completion. So that's kind of what I was going over. Your four-year planning, we can always set up a meeting to go over and create your individualized four-year plan. And then also depending on what your post high school plans are. Um, through Castro Valley High School, um, we do have Ms. Zucker Brown, the College and Career Center, who has been a really big support for students um, and, and their post secondary plan um, and then the uh, post secondary planning. So if you are interested, you can, you can always set up an appointment with the CVBA counselor and um, where needed, we can always connect with the um, CVHS College and Career Counselor for additional support. Um, you know, also in, in interventions and support. Um, so whether you need a 504 plan or if you have an IEP plan uh, uh, as well, um, you know, we can always uh, support you on, on those needs as well. Um, Check-ins with students to go over all, overall progress and that um, at the in-person support workshops. And then just monitoring your progress and, and facilitating creating goals um, so that you can make that necessary progress each day. For the content teachers, you know, they can help you uh, monitor your progress in, in the specific course, provide regular feedback on assignments, um, support students during the workshops. So if you have any questions, um, or maybe there's an area that you, you're kind of got stuck on and need more support, or just more clarity um, as to what is being expected of you, um, that would be a good way to, to, to connect with the teacher with the in-person um, component. Um, and then also providing instruction. Um, as, as we shared, the majority of the, that learning is gonna come through the Edgenuity program. Um, you can always reach out though to your teacher if you need more, um, just more information or, or need additional uh, instruction. Um, you can, and then also respond to student and family emails. So yeah, as, as I said, it's always you know, good to uh, keep that line of communication open with the teachers. Um, provide and they can provide you with feedback on writing assignments, lab reports, and project 
and then also they can assist your student to prepare for the uh, assessment. So I can uh, take this slide for communication. You know, families will receive weekly updates about student progress through Edgenuity itself. So uh, students and parents have login access, um, and then ultimately it's it's automated. But you can also um, check in, you know, uh, throughout the week to see where your student is in terms of the progress that they're making. Um, if you need additional reports or updates in terms of overall, you know, um, we're happy to also assist if if you need to get a little bit more familiar with how to. Um, you know, use the Edgenuity app and program appropriately. Um, students and families receive regular calls from our CVA uh, staff, um, including uh, both the RoboDialer, but also getting to work with our uh, attendance clerk, Ms. Annika Clay, if, if uh, additional information is needed in regards to completion or progress, you know, during the allotted time slots or hours. Wanted to make sure, obviously, that uh, students are logging in, are making progress throughout the program. If they run into a hiccup, that they can you know, work with a content teacher. If after school hours, they need additional help and support, um, our district has purchased for the next 18 months, uh, Paper, which is the online tutoring uh, uh, platform and program where they can work with a live tutor um, to help them get through some content as well. And that also gets reports that can be sent back to the Edgenuity or CVBA program um, and our content teachers as well. Um, ultimately, we wanna make sure that we have multiple ways um, to provide students and families, um, you know, uh, your portal account access um, where you can monitor uh, progress and grades and also troubleshoot as we want to make sure students are accessing the, the curriculum, they're learning it, and more, and more importantly, able to demonstrate it um, through the program. So. Uh, Ms. Abbott, do you want to take this one? Um, so CVVA started um, six years ago. I think the first year I did it, we had, gosh, probably 10 or 15 students. Um, it kind of started to slowly exponentially grow. I think we had about 60 students before um, the pandemic hit, right? Then, of course, it, it turned into a whole nother school <laughs> last year. But, um, you know, typically there are certain kinds of students that have, have thrived in programs like this independent learners, students that are self-directed, that you know are comfortable reaching out to teachers, getting support, especially virtually, right? Now we're in um, you know, a mode where, where students are needing to check emails and check in with teachers at virtual office hours. Um, students that have been interested in having a flexible schedule, that's been a big one as well. So maybe a student that's taking a, a community college course or has a job or, um, Gosh, we've had some, some special athletes in the program. So lots of different cases there. Um, but managing, you know, good at managing uh, academic rigor on their own, watching videos on their own, supplementing that with support from content teachers, right? And then also potentially like accelerating and taking, taking other courses with local JCs and things like that as well. Thanks, Raul. CVBA is located on the Redwood campus. So um, Redwood High School houses a bunch of different programs and CVVA, the Virtual Academy is one of the independent study programs that's housed there um, up right off of Seven Hills and Lake Chabot. So on Clifton Way. Um, and that, those are all of those different programs are the programs that Mr. Khan was saying that, that he oversees. <laughs> um, what I'll also share obviously <laughs> is if and when students ever have tech issues, should they need to exchange uh, for a uh, functioning or new laptop. Obviously, we want to help and support them uh, get the the you know the virtual textbooks that they need uh, in order to be successful. Um, we like to call uh, Redwood High School the secret garden. Um, we actually have a garden here on campus, um, and uh, it's a beautiful campus. It hosts um, primarily our um, you know Redwood High School students. Uh, who are working in a smaller non-comprehensive uh, classroom setting. Um, you know, it's a credit recovery program. We also host our Roy Johnson Adult Transition Program, um, our Counseling and Rich Program. Um, we also host uh, down in the lower campus with Mr. Stravopoulos, our Home Hospital Intervention and Independent Study. Um, it, it's, it's a beautiful space. Um, it, 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 I always say it might look light, but we're heavy. Um, we have a lot to offer here at, the, at this at this school. Um, programs for people, and as I shared, 
two of our uh, you know tremendous counselors and, and, and teacher on special assignment help to support not only coming uh, to this space, but making sure that all students um, have, have what they need in order to be successful. But for in-person, what you're looking at over in the corner um, toward the multi-purpose room off to the left is where room 15 is located. Um, and that's where our initial house for CBBA would be. Um, and we're also looking to branch out to uh, the room next to Mr. Stravopoulos next year um, in, uh, down in the independent study lower campus uh, where uh, I believe um, it was housed initially historically and then moved up to room 15 at a later point. So um, I, I believe the building actually has Mr. Diverti's name across it where um, you know he previously had helped lead the uh, lower campus home hospital independent study program as well. Um, some student feedback. CBVA gives students the flexibility they want and need to help them be successful at their own pace. CVVA brings a lot of flexibility to your life and you still learn a lot. Uh, the staff and students are kind and welcoming and will help you reach your potential. It is great. Uh, I think it's great for kids to be able to be independent and strong. Some of our parent and guardian feedback. One of the wonderful things about CVVA has been the classroom setting. Setting is casual yet designed to enhance the learning experience. Teachers are readily available. Students who want extra help with understanding the topic can get one-on-one -on -one support from a teacher. Staff at CVVA really care about the students. The staff does a great job of working with the student and family and assuring that specific educational goals are set and being met. The counselor takes time to review students, <clears throat> to review students' progress and help uh, each student make the course choices that best match his or her or their graduation goals. Our student has thrived at CVVA. So how do you enroll in CVVA for the next year? Your student may have started their current school's programming or scheduling process over at Canyon or Creekside. So we just ask that you please have your student fill out the provided Google form if they will be enrolling in CVVA for fall of 2022. <laughs> um, can we uh, copy and paste those and put those in the chat for our parents, please? I'll put the link to the website too, because I know they're all on the CBVA website. Okay, wonderful. Put those in there. Oops. Apologies. Just... All right. Um, and some helpful links when filling out the CBVA course selection form um, is our programming presentation for spring of 2022, scheduling options and course list, um, our CVHS uh, program planning guide along with our grade level course options. Thank you, Ms. Abbott. Um, Ms. Asuncion. So um, yes, please, if you have any questions regarding whether or not the CBBA program is right for your student and your family's circumstances, please, please make sure that you contact either myself Miss Abbott, Mr. Khan, or Mr. Rodriguez, um, we would be happy to go over um, your student's transcript and really just to discuss as far as whether or not CVBA full-time versus CVBA hybrid is the better choice for your student. Uh, these are a lot of questions. Are we going to go over these questions one by one? I feel like those we're going to be actually, here all day. Those were the questions that were asked last year at this same meeting. So I recorded them for them. And um, the one that I had actually had the answers on it. <laughs> um, so I recorded them last year as Miss Peritor and Miss Amon, the previous principal, were answering the questions. So the current one in the drive has all the answers on there too, but <laughs> got it. So I think what we could go ahead and do now is uh, we could go ahead and if this is okay with everyone in the crowd, we could open it up for a general question and answer session. Um, 
if you want to talk specifically about your individual student and you are not able to stay on, then again, please feel free to contact any of us. This is our information. Um, if we could also put this on the chat too, or you know, make this available, then that would be great. Um, but we'll go ahead. I think, would it be easiest for everyone if we go ahead and have participants put their questions in the chat and we can start from there? All right. So for anyone still on here, if you have any questions, please feel free to use the chat. Uh, Mr. Rodriguez, how about we stop presenting and I'll, we'll just try to go to the live screen. Thank you. Um, as we're waiting for people to put on um, questions, one thing that I did want to mention, so for the Google Sheet that we are asking students to fill out, if you are planning on doing CVBA, either hybrid or full-time next year, so the Google Form, if we can try to have those in by Friday, February the 18th, that would be great. Now, again, if any questions come up after this session is over, like I said, please contact us directly so that we could discuss more, especially if you're on the fence of whether or not this is still a good program for you and your student. Um, and you really just kind of want to, you know, really just kind of have another person to just kind of, I guess, bounce your ideas on. So please contact us if you just need someone to listen about what your plan might be or what classes you think your students should take. Um, for those of you who did come late, um, I do wanna reassure you that this is being recorded um, and we will uh, post this to the CVVA website in case you need to re-review the slides that we shared earlier today. <laughs> okay, um, again, I'll stay on the call for, you know, um, additional time, but if you don't have any questions, um, we, we thank you for joining us today and we hope you have a, a great rest of your afternoon. Um, and again, feel free to contact us anytime. You can also go to the Red, uh, Redwood High School web website and, and contact us directly. Um, our office phone here is 510-537-3193. Uh, I'll put that in the chat as well.